chanting so you could try to get on television. Uh, Vince McMahon has a army of audio and video people. So when you're acting like a jackass, the camera's not going to be on you. When you're starting a soup stupid chant that all 40, 50 people in your area are doing, he's going to shut off the mics in your area. They're going to drown you out with fake crowd noise. Yes, they have fake crowd noise, if you didn't know that yet. Okay. And then he has other people planted in the seats that are paid to start chants of their own. And they'll start a chant to drown you out. So why can't you just go, which you paid a lot of money for that ticket, and enjoy the show? You stand up, you clap, you cheer, you boo, you do whatever it takes to enjoy it. But you're ruining it for other people by trying to hijack it with your stupid little chants. Nobody pays $85 to hear you yell, you fucked up. Or bullshit. Okay? Especially now with 2019. Enough with the what chants. Like seriously, how long has Steve Austin been out of wrestling that we still need to go what at every word that someone says? And the one fall, which Vince McMahon has already gotten all his announcers to hurry up their introduction process so the fans don't do it, or at least are not heard. Indie, folks. Keep indie chants at indie. That's what makes indie great. It's different. It has a different feel, a different look, a different atmosphere, and it should be. Because when you go to WWE, it shouldn't feel like indie. Because then, if one, if they both feel the same, then what's, what separates one from the other? Because you can't say the talent, because there is plenty of independent talent that was signed by WWE. Do they dummy them down so they can work 300 days a year? Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to be the same indie star that you remember from ROH or GCW or, or Warriors or, or, or Evolve or any other big show? No, it's not going to be the same because they're an investment now. So they're going to dummy them down, limit their routines because they want them wrestling 300 times a year. Okay, so jumping off, uh, you know, buildings, landing through trucks full of glass and um, smashing each other over the head with barbed wire bats and shit like that's not going to happen. So if you expected that to happen when you've seen that they were signed by NXT or WWE... And you're disappointed, then I then you're an idiot. Because how do you not know by now that it's not going to happen? ECW is a long ways ago. It's not coming back. It's not happening. If you want to see that kind of stuff, go to an independent show. Support your local independent company. But you can't sit there and shit on WWE because they dummy down talent that you used to love on the independent scene. Because that's just not the way it works. But then you can't sit there and shit on indie because it's not as good as WWE. So it's like you can't have it both ways. So keep indie, indie. Keep WWE, WWE. And I can honestly say I went to an Impact Wrestling taping that they had in uh, Queens, New York a couple months ago. And it had a... It was really weird. It, It wasn't an independent feel... It was small. It was really close to, you know, people were really on top of the ring and close. You had the metal rails, things like that. You know, but they had the giant LED screen and, um, you know, the, the, not pyro, but you had the smokes and, and things like that, smoke machine. So it kind of was like that, in, that, that tweener. It was a little bit higher budget independent, but not WWE, you know, not, not anywhere close. You know, it was kind of like the women's evolution pay-per-view. You know, just metal guardrails, no LED uh, uh, ring aprons and posts and things like that. Just the LED board when they come down the ramp. A little smoke machines and um, metal guardrails. But it still had that really cool, on top of the action, intimate feel of independent wrestling. But at the same time bigger names so it still felt mainstream so it was kind of that that tweener and i know a lot of fans have said that about roh and evolve and uh even nxt even though that's 
considered mainstream and it's uh, developmental for WWE. Even though WWE tries to keep it as kind of its own brand, it, it's still developmental. So, and, and speaking of developmental, I would definitely, if you have not, get out there and see Fighting With My Family, uh, the story based on the Knights, uh, Paige and her family. And uh, it was a, a movie put together by The Rock. It was a great movie. Um, kind of sheds a little light in the background of in the uh, the wrestling family and the independent feel of uh, local events leading up to getting to NXT. Kind of like the movie The Wrestler, just without the goal of getting to WWE. It, it had a really nice feel to it. And uh, it, it was a really cool movie. And Thea Drinidad, who played AJ Lee, absolutely nailed everything about AJ Lee. I mean, her demeanor, her, her movement, her attitude, and even the way she spoke. I mean, if you close your eyes, it, it literally sounded like AJ Lee. It was pretty scary, actually. So uh, check out that movie, Fighting With My Family. So, you know, again, we have to separate independent wrestling. You know, if you go to, uh, and I'll use like New York and New Jersey for an example. If you go to a Warriors a Wrestling show in New York, or GCW, Standalone Wrestling, SWF, Pro Wrestling, Magic, ECWA, um, oh, I'm probably missing a whole crap load, but if you go to uh, any of those shows, they all have one thing in common, a similar atmosphere f feel to it. You know, whether it's in a VFW or a, uh, a church hall, a uh, gym, school gymnasium, um, or, or even if it's an outdoor event. You know, we've I've been to shows where it's been on a football field, you know, doing a fundraiser for the football team, things like that. Been to ones where it's been on a baseball field. It's doing the same thing. So, but it all has that similar feel where you're kind of like right there. You feel like you could touch them, but you can't. You're so far enough away. And fans get a, it's a special feel compared to WWE where it feels like, you know, it's like going to a baseball stadium. It's like, wow, they're right there, but, you know, kind of feel a little disconnected, not, not really the same feel, but still very enjoyable. So my question is, why do fans feel they need to go to either show and ruin it for everybody else? Just go and enjoy the show. And then for the ones who don't go to these shows and they sit at home on the internet and it's called the internet wrestling community for a reason and they sit there and they critique wrestling shows. How are you critiquing a wrestling show that you didn't attend? What are you basing it on? People... Commenting on Facebook about match results and what you read through another blogger. Like, how are you critiquing something? That'd be like going to a restaurant. You'd be, hey, hey, it'd be like going to TGI Fridays, having dinner, and then going home and critiquing Ruby Tuesdays. What does one have to do with the other? Nothing. You weren't there. If you're not there, how are you critiquing it? And it's not even like you saw it on video or a stream that you can say one thing or another or even turn around and tell people that, oh, well, you know, it had this certain feel. How do you know it had that certain feel? You weren't there. If I watch a baseball game on TV or a hockey game on TV, I can't tell you what the feel was like at the stadium or arena. I'm not there. It would be just pure stupidity to say otherwise. And these dirt sheets that continuously... And all these dirt sheets, they're nothing but wrestling fans that live by the motto, if you can't do it, talk about it. So they sit there and they just make shit up. Like literally make shit up. It's like every dirt sheet is like a knockoff version of the onion. I mean, you just literally make shit up. And if you make shit up enough times, eventually, your predict one of your predictions or two predictions come true. 
So now you try to tell everybody that you're the one that reported it. When in actuality, you haven't reported squat. You reported fake news. You made shit up. And it just happened to fall into place that way. Because it was probably common sense anyway. And the history of the storyline was going to determine it was going to happen that way anyway. And you guys do nothing but copy and paste off each other anyway. Every one of these dirt sheets is the same goddamn story over and over again that you guys copy and paste and you put a little extra in there to make it a little spin on it to make it your own. But it's literally the same story, word for word. Some of these are even stupid enough to use the same photos. And then these are the same people that complain about David Meltzer, who is an, an absolute moron. But they complain about David Meltzer. Or they complain about people who take pictures um, when they're hanging around arenas hours and hours before shows. And they kept pictures of somebody who's going into the arena that wasn't announced to be there. And then they complain about that. They complain about the spoilers. But what you're doing is no different. You're writing about something that you know nothing about. Just because you're a fan doesn't make you a sports writer. I've been watching baseball for over 40 years. Does that make me a sports writer? Absolutely not. If I went to school to be a sports writer, then I'd be a sports writer. But if I went to school and I studied business and uh, business management and English literature and Greek mythological studies, does that make me a, a wrestling writer? Nope. Have I ever been asked to come to a show? And I'm not speaking for myself. Have I ever been asked to come to a show and cover the event and write about it with absolutely no knowledge of the business or have any writing background? No. Me personally, have I been asked to come to shows and cover it when we used to do recaps every week for wrestling shows? Absolutely. But I've worked in media, sports media. Still do. I worked in advanced media. I worked in public relations for baseball. I worked in, like I said, advanced media for Major League Baseball. I worked for a minor league baseball affiliate of the New York Yankees in their, technically, their media relations department. But am I calling myself a baseball writer? Absolutely not. Do I have an opinion? Of course, everybody does. But I'm not going to write a story using my opinions and telling people it's facts. Because then that's just bullshit. And that's all you guys are doing on these dirt sheets. And there's a reason why they're nicknamed dirt sheets. Because it's crap. If it looks like crap, Smells like crap. It's probably crap. You could polish a turd all you want. Make it shiny. Color it. It's still shit. So if you want to be a sports writer. Then go to school. And be a sports writer. If you want to be a couch commando. And you want to sit there and do armchair booking. Then that's all you're going to be known as. You have zero credibility. And your sources are garbage. Because your sources are just another site reporting the same thing. Sources say. Really? You don't have a source. It's just you making up a story. I can do that too. I can say at WrestleMania that, let's see. Shawn Michaels has been rumored to interfere in the Triple H Batista match, screwing over Triple H so Batista wins. Sources say, my contact has told me. Is this true? Absolutely not. Will it happen? You never know, it could. Does this make me a sports writer if it does? No. And if it doesn't happen, what do these fake writers say? Oh, they must have changed the, the script.
That's what David Meltzer does all the time.